when we talk about risks on a project, you know, you want to make sure that, that as we're going through and managing a project, you want to spend time to assess risk. Typically, earlier on, earlier on in the project, you want to determine, you know, see if you can figure out what any risks are, any of the known things that you might uh, determine to be a risk on the project, and then also, you know, so that you can execute the project with the urgency that's required for it. You know, that kind of helps do that. Um, so, you know, I'm sure as you guys understand, as you've managed projects, all, there's always going to be something that happens on the project, unforeseen or potentially foreseen, that can affect the planning that you've done. And so risk management is really going to give that specific action to take. It's going to, it's going to say, you know, you, you determine the risk, you qualify it, you rank it, categorize it, determine the likelihood of it happening, or if it does happen, figure out the response that you're going to take, and we'll go through all the different um, options of what those are as well. Um, so that's what we'll talk about here as far as our enablers. We've got, uh, for this first part, determining the approach that we're going to take to risk management, assessing and prioritizing the risks and the risk responses in an iterative fashion. So again, kind of starting off at the beginning, laying them out, and then continuing to assess them you know, every day, every week, whatever it is, for the, um, based on the needs of your project. You also want to determine what response you're going to take to a risk, and then implement those responses. And do any type of follow-up that will be required, you know, as a, as based on that response, whether it's a change control or something like that. Uh, so we have a few deliverables and tools here. Uh, we'll have a risk management plan and a risk register. Um, we'll have a risk response plan, and then also implementing the risk response plan. For tools, um, we're going to be using organizational process assets, meetings, expert judgment, risk analysis techniques, um, also updating to risk register and other documents. We have a risk probability and impact assessment, and there's a matrix that goes with that. So you can kind of lay out all the risks, and we'll look at some of that as well. And then also monitoring and managing risks. So a risk here is that uncertain event or condition that if it occurs can have a positive or negative effect on one or more project objectives. And then you have a trigger condition, which would basically be the event or the situation that is going to indicate whether a risk is about to occur. So the primary components are a measure of probability that the risk will occur and also the impact of the risk on the project. So some common ways to classify risks are either effect-based, or source base and also level of uncertainty. And generally, risk is perceived as a negative, but in project management, risk can be positive or negative. And you can see negative risks, um, they, might, they would have a negative impact on your project. They could also be referred to as threats. Uh, so a project manager, you know, we're, as PMs, we're going to really strive to prevent risks from occurring or if we can't prevent them, then reduce their impact. For positive risks, these are going to produce that positive outcome for your project. And positive risks are also called opportunities. So a trigger condition, we talked about that trigger condition. Um, triggers can come from external factors that are going to influence your project. It could be like a proposed change in maybe legislation or some type of um, guidelines, you know, especially in in specific industries like technology, you know, if you have, um, or even in the medical field like the HIPAA and everything, like different different uh, privacy guidelines and things those can change, that can cause a risk to your project. Uh, risks can also be internal. Um, so these are things like if you have a change in staffing or maybe a change in governance, say you're moving from a, you know, more waterfall methodology to more of an agile methodology. 